in March 2003, the FBI arrested 44-year-old Andrew Carlson. Newspapers reported that this man was extraordinarily lucky. In the history of stock markets, he had earned like no other. He invested $800 and within 2 weeks, it turned into $350 million. The FBI suspected that he was running a scam and he must be an insider trader. When Andrew was questioned, he answered he was a time traveler. From 250 years in the future, he knew how the stocks would perform. The FBI was surprised at this, convinced that he was lying. They undertook the case to prove so. When they investigated some more, they found that before December 2002, there was no record of Carlson. Even more surprising was that on 3rd April, Carlson had to appear in court for his bail hearing, but he had disappeared and was never found again. If we were to rationally question this incident, why did Carlson use his own name for trades? Why didn't he stop well before his actions attracted attention? Even better is why would someone from more than 250 years in the future even be allowed to travel to the past, make changes and therefore alter the timeline? Even better, how could a person from so far into the future even communicate with people in the present day? The truth is, this story was a satire. It was a fake news and people believed that it was true. Time travel. We have witnessed it in many cartoons, web series and movies. The concept of time travel, which is how one can travel either forward or backward in time without undergoing any physical changes. Laura, this is me. Hi. Parallel contact, babe. The first type of time travel is one-way travel to the future. The traveler leaves home, but the people he or she left behind might age or be dead by the time the traveler returns. For example, the famous movie Interstellar and a web series Manifest. The second type of time travel is instantaneous time jumping. The traveler travels from one point to another point at any instant of time using a time machine. For example, the very famous cartoon show called Doraemon. Another type of time travel is when the traveler is standing and the time around him or her changes. For example, the famous sequel Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. The third type of time travel is slow time travel. In order to go to a desired time, the traveler has to remain confined to a box for the certain span of time to which he desires to go. And hence, the time moves backwards for him or her. Like, if he or she wants to go a day backwards, then he or she needs to remain confined to the box for 24 hours. For example, a movie from 2004, Primer. Another type is to travel with the speed of light, which is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. For example, famous movie Superman 1979. So there is one arousing question, which is, has anyone ever done this? The question is, amongst all these concepts of time travel, which way is actually possible today or which may be possible in the future. Some of these are actually possible to do, even today. Broadly speaking, there can be two types of time travel. One is to travel into the future and the other is to go back into the past. Let's talk about traveling to the future first. The scientific explanations and theories of traveling to the future are derived from Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity. The concept of time dilation was introduced by Einstein. Before Einstein, it was believed that time is constant. Whether you are on Earth or on Mars or near a black hole, time was believed to be something that was constant. One of the most famous mathematicians and physicists in the world, Isaac Newton, was the one to say this. In his opinion, 
regardless of the speed with which you are traveling through space the position the flow of time would be constant albert einstein was the first person to refute this he said that newton was wrong he claimed time was like a river water flows in a river sometimes slows down sometimes the flow of the river speeds up similarly the flow of time sometimes it slows down and sometimes it picks up the pace depending upon speed and gravity einstein had said that time can actually be sped up and slowed down if the speed and gravitational force could be changed this is known as time dilation the way your pupils dilate similarly time dilates too when the speed of the object increases or if an object is subjected to an increased gravitational force the first is with speed if you are sitting in an object that is going very fast like an aeroplane or a spacecraft the faster something goes the more would time slow down for it relative to a person who isn't going as fast theoretically if we build a rocket that travels at the speed of light you remain in that rocket for 10 years traveling at that speed then you return to earth the time on earth would be 9000 years later it is scientifically possible to do so today the only problem is that there isn't an aircraft that travels at this speed for now gennady pedalka a russian astronaut is credited with the most time travel into the future вот и моя работа мне нравится летать мне нравится готовиться У меня были разные экипажи за время моих предыдущих, предыдущих трёх полётов на МКС. Очень много людей, инструкторов, участвовали в моей подготовке, очень много учителей пребывания в космосе. А вот при день экспериментов, скажем, надо мной, но над моими коллегами, которые тоже вот-вот подбежаются к такому же рекорду. Это будет интересно для последующих миссий. Космонавт Российской Федерации Павел Кагинадий In comparison to the people on earth he is 0.02 seconds younger there's another way of time dilation as laid down by einstein which is by using gravitational force to visualize it imagine a fabric of space time imagine a mesh like shown in this picture put balls on it you can think of these balls as planetary objects the heavier a ball would be the more this mesh would get wrapped the more mass in the ball in the planetary object the more would be its gravitational force earth's gravitational force is less than jupiter's sun's gravitational force is more than jupiter similarly in the fabric of space time you get to see a curve with the gravitational force of an object the closer you get to an object with a high gravitational force the more would you feel time slow down This basically means that if you want to travel through time in the future then spend some time near Jupiter or around the sun or near an object that has even more gravitational force like a black hole if you spend some time near a black hole time would pass you by slowly this is the same concept shown in the film Interstellar the main character in it lands on a planet near a black hole each hour he spends there it's 7 years for the people not on the planet it will actually happen so but whether someone can survive being that close to a black hole is unknown it's said that black holes are the heaviest objects in the universe it's also said that light starts bending around black holes this was considered to be purely theoretical but on 10th april 2019 this picture went viral on the internet this is the first image of the supermassive black hole at the heart of our milky way galaxy sagittarius a star it's very exciting here today to show you today this best ever image of that enigma sagittarius a star so we start out from the plains of uh uh of chile where the alma telescope is located and we're going to zoom in to Sagittarius the archer which is high in the sky uh, above the, uh, northern chile 
and we will go and zoom in first in the optical, but we have to switch to the infrared because there we can penetrate all the way into the galaxy. We leave tens of millions of stars behind and we get to the place where stars are in orbit about a, around a dark spot. For decades, we have known about a compact object that is at the heart of our galaxy that is four million times more massive than our sun. Today, right this moment, we have direct evidence that this object is a black hole. Interestingly, there is a third way of time traveling in the future, that is cryosleep. It has been shown in many movies too. There was a recent film, Passenger, you might remember. People were traveling on a spacecraft, they were frozen, they were in cryosleep in it for months and years. Humans are put into a condition where they don't age and just remain asleep. It's science fiction, but in reality, NASA is trying to develop a status chamber. In it, astronauts would be kept in a state of mild hypothermia in a cold environment. In it, astronauts will be able to sleep continuously for two weeks, a hibernation of sorts. The concept behind it is that when a body is kept cool, the chemical reactions in the body would slow down to quite an extent. This would lead to energy conservation and would slow down aging. There was a case in Japan related to this where an injured man survived 24 days without food or water when his body went into a hibernation of sorts. The temperature of that man's body was only 22 degrees Celsius. But by chance, I don't know with what miracle, not only did this man survive, but he also made a fast recovery from that mode. Medical reports claimed that there was no permanent damage to his body. His organ had slowed down and his brain was unharmed too. Cryosleep is something which may be developed in the future by NASA or some other space agency. But you would have noticed one thing that all the ways I have talked about up till now were of time travel into the future. Now the question arises, can we travel into the past realistically? We can get a glimpse of the past because even with how fast light travels, if we talk about distance in light years, it takes years for light to travel to some places. So if we could get somewhere before the light reaches there and then look back at the approaching light, the light would be from the past. This is how we can see the past. Can we actually travel through time into the past? On 28th June 2009, world famous physicist Stephen Hawking hosted a party at the University of Cambridge. Though everyone was invited, but no one attended. Stephen Hawking had hosted this party for time travelers. If a time traveler was visiting our timeline from the future, they were welcome at this party. This comedic experiment was conducted to prove that it isn't possible to travel to the past. Theoretically speaking, Einstein's theory of relativity doesn't disapprove time travel to the past. Einstein had said that in the mesh of space-time, if a gravitational force is put that is so heavy that the object falls through the mesh, it would create a wormhole. We can use that wormhole to travel into the past. To do this, we would need an extremely powerful gravitational field similar to one of a black hole. Perhaps a spinning black hole can generate so much gravitational field that it bends the curvature of the space-time back on itself. It would create a closed time-like curve known as CTC. Nobel Prize winning physicist Kip Thorne believes that small wormholes get created and they disappear in space all the time. But they are really small, smaller than atoms. If we want to travel through them, it would take a lot of energy to expand them. Not only normal energy, but negative energy also. 
negative energy is a kind of anti gravitational energy that would repel the fabric of space time like the same poles of magnets repel one another negative energy would work in the same way to repel it this would make it possible to keep the wormhole for a long while how would this negative energy be harvested how would it be created this is purely theoretical for now when we talk about traveling to the past there are major obstacles for us i'm talking about paradoxes such as the grandfather paradox suppose if i go to the past while time traveling i kill my great grandfather if he dies how would i be born if my great grandfather died i shouldn't be alive if i was never born i never existed how do you explain this this is a paradox either i'm alive or i'm not this goes against logic there are some theories to explain this such as the theory of multiverse the theory claims that what happened once was in one universe but when you travel back in time and change something it would create a new universe related to this there's another paradox the predestination paradox it claims that when i go into the past everything i do shapes my present timeline this paradox claims that things are destined to turn out in a certain way things will play out as written in destiny no matter how much you try to change the past whatever you try to change and the result of that changes would be your present this was the concept in many movies like 12 monkeys time crimes the time traveler's wife and predestination overall there would be many logical problems when traveling to the past there would be paradoxes due to these it may never be possible but traveling to the future it is possible even today and it will become more and more probable in the future to get a glimpse of the past is currently possible too so in a sense time travel already exists 